Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Reference Battlefield 1945. There was... I, I, I hesitate to call it a controversy because it seemed like a fucking small, small, small minority of people that were legitimately upset about the the woman part. And I've just oh, yes. placed it down to... <laughs> I just placed it down to... It's either alternative history or exaggerated, oh, which is fine, the, as it always is. And the reason they're calling it authentic and immersive is because those have become buzzwords for the Battlefield franchise now. I think I it is, want... because it never has been authentic or real. I just right, want to know so... how she survived being lit up by bullets and walking off like nothing happened. Yeah, well, she has a robot kind of arm, like... too, or a prosthetic arm, too, so she's capable of a lot. And I think that's why they never that. really touched on it, though, is because it's just th they use them as buzzwords now. They don't actually yeah, mean anything yeah. anymore. Yeah, or, that's exactly they how they've never used them. anything at any point. Especially um, after when they first showed off the last Battlefield and they started it with the, the clip of the Twitch streamer who, like, uh, said he, like, jumped out of a tank and, and, and shot someone. And, and, and then the, the, the speaker was like, ha! Wow. Here's Battlefield. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, uh, with all that said, Women did I just want to see gameplay. <laughs> I want to I wanna see actual gameplay, and I think they'll do that because they've shown matches before. They'll do that, but it's DICE. It's EA. We're going to see the most staged possible gameplay. Yeah. And it's going to be an hour. It's going to last for an hour after the main conference. Unless... Unless the whatever Star Wars game or whatever that they want to show, uh, they want that to be the focus afterward. In which case, they'll have that for like an hour afterward, if now, it's that uh, far along. I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly gloss over what I have here about Devolver, and then we can just focus on EA. But for Devolver, okay. they say, um, oh, I've had the Bethesda thing up for a while there. For Devolver, this is their this is the press statement Devolver um, put out. They said, This year's big fancy press conference will feature real, actual game reveals and technological innovations from Devolver Labs, the research and development arm of uh, Devolver Digital, responsible for last year's earliest access program and making throwing, quote unquote, throwing money at the screen a valid form of payment. Uh, Digital Devolver said in a press release, yeah, that's what they said in the press release. There will, uh, there will almost certainly be blood, and possibly loss of life. <laughs> Potential concurrent viewers are encouraged to rewatch last year's press conference as the year, a uh, this year's event aims to extend Developer Digital Press Conference Cinematic Universe, or DD PCCU for short through the blatant reuse of jokes and vague callbacks to the original. Where? Uh, are, are, uh, do we have the Twitch stream on in the background real quick? Um, I mean, I'm I made streaming. this nice EA thing. Because I was just, because I saw two people like running for it and I'm not sure if they were like EA guys working the, the boots or whatever, but they were running. They had <laughs> to have been. Unless it's getting packed because it is EA or it is an open event. Yeah, and it looks like there are people walking around already, which is why I wasn't sure if they were EA or not. Um. So it's just but yeah, Devolver fun. is a f Devolver's conference last year is only 15 minutes, and so anyone should uh, go back and watch that before Devolver's conference tomorrow. Um. So, anyways, EA. If we have time, we may even just restream it here again. I don't think anyone would stop us. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it really depends funny. how much time we have, though, too. But regardless, um, EA. Sports we're, ball. Yeah, Easy prediction. Sports ball. We're, the things here I have bullet pointed is what we know we'll see oh, is... Yeah, look here. Battlefield 5, Anthem, Sports, Indies, and Star Wars. Now, let's not talk about uh, Indies because of leaks. So yep. we're just all going to put on our... Me and Pop are just going to put on our surprise faces for that. <laughs> um, but otherwise, we won't discuss it. <laughs> um, Anthem. Uh, 
I actually very we fearful have... of it under the hands of EA. It's clearly a comp a competitor to Destiny, so yeah, they they have every opportunity to not fuck up, but they'll probably make every opportunity to fuck up. Yeah, um, Steven, you want to repeat what you said before off stream? Yeah, it's like from what we saw the gameplay, it looks fun with the certain armors being able to do certain things, the weapon system looking interesting ish. Just need to figure out about more about how those system work and especially how they're going to handle an end game because from the look of it it looked like it was i think from last year it was a four person group that was running around i think mm -hmm. not not that four person end games are impossible but it's either going to have to be like a get a bigger group together for a potential raid type event or they're going to have to come up with some sort of event for people to do I, I just can't think of anything off the top of my head that isn't something along the lines of like a raid. But I just don't know how to make it interesting with four people. I'm, I'm just yeah. very curious to see what they do. Well, I think also, I, I, there's, a lot, I saw, there's a lot you can I, learn from, um, I mean, other, uh, uh, what is it? Other MMOs. But yeah. With what they showed last year, though, it looked more like it was an open world type bit. Yeah, no, like, the open world's fine, it's the more so... It's okay to have, like, a giant open world and stuff. What the fuck was that camera angle? Sorry, just on the oh, stream, they had, like, a camera, they had a camera angle looking down at whatever the fuck they were playing. There you go, Austin, there's something for the oh, bingo card. bingo card! We did it! What was Before it? Before even the first conference! They were looking, like, they had, like, a camera on top of the balcony above them, and just looking down at the iPads they were playing on. Yeah. Oof. Very what bingo, what bingo slot is that? That'd just be uh, showing showing off a game. Oh god screen. damn it! Okay, yeah. Yeah, EA already did it because I guess we're playing Madden on Easy the iPad. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, we I would did it. I would pull it up, and I'm still struggling to find EA stream in this <laughs> app. Uh, and they're right, right? It's just search. EA. Yep, just EA. Yeah, yeah there it is. Uh, what was saying? Oh, yeah. it, it, oh, do it, they? Is it say what game they're playing? Uh, oh, here it is. Um, Found it. Look. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I'm good. Because I'm just watching Twitch's stream, so. Yeah, we're um, are we all yeah, on they, Twitch's stream? I'm on EA's stream, but so on Twitch. If there's not much of a, or if there's a big difference. Yeah, let's I'm stay at... to EA's for the consistency of it. All right, let me all switch right, over right to EA's. I'll I'll, I'll just mention we're not at 21 minutes exactly. Oh, the game feeds on the left. Yeah, no, like they had like a camera like above them, where they were. Here for you guys to see. Like, they had a camera, like, above them, like, on a balcony above them, looking down at them for a second. Uh, what was I saying now? Oh yeah, for, for Anthem, like, it's good that the game's going to be open world and such. The main worry is, even if it is open world and such, you can't underestimate players. Players will finish everything in a month. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If, so if, there's, they're... If, there's, if there's nothing end game after that open world, if, it, if it's just running around the open world, grabbing random real weapons that can hold people but people need to push for like an end game event i'm just curious what the end game event for that game will be yeah it needs to be an expansive end game right from the get-go and that's how it has to come out exactly also as i saw grumble post on twitter as well uh hopefully there's no really shitty in-game chatter again yeah yeah well here i'm gonna uh since it's relevant i'm gonna pop this image in the chat again yeah, just uh, I'll I'll spend okay, about yeah. twenty minutes exact as well. <laughs> uh, I'm at twenty minutes exact. No, all eyes are on Bioware. Um, and apparently respawn is there. Mhm. Mm this is a really cool idea, right? Like, for um, respawns there, and there might be a solo Star Wars game. Not not solo the character, but a single player Star God. Wars game. Oh. And I think it that's may also a, be multiplayer, but we'll see. That's a that's a really good combination of things if it could happen. <laughs> oh, I just but also they're under EA's hands, so uh, yeah. Who yeah. knows what kind of things they'll offer post launch when it comes to microtransactions? Yeah, there's, and and they're so we'll see. back and forth on there thoughts on microtransactions because they reinforced it for Star Wars and then kicked it out of Battlefield. So who knows where that is. Well, 
to be fair with Battlefield, I imagine, because we're talking now six, seven months post Battlefront 2, they probably had plenty of time to start reworking that system to, what was it, last month now? Yeah. When they announced Battlefield 5, they were like, okay, yeah, we're, we're doing things different here. Yeah, um... If, if if Microsoft can, within months, turn off their DRM for their console back in 2013, people can remove microtransactions pretty fast, too. <laughs> yeah, the, um... And from what I've heard, Solo was not a bad movie. I've heard a lot of people say it was the best Disney Star Wars movie. That's, uh... I've heard that sometimes, but I've also heard that it's literally nothing memorable in it. Yeah, so that, that at the same from the time. the same people. At the same time, yeah. It's from it, the it same people, so that's it's like, not a movie that needed to exist at all, but it is still the best one produced. Like that Wait. sounds three steps below an average Marvel movie to me. <laughs> yeah, and it's really <laughs> like, not that hard to top all the Disney Star Wars. Yeah, movies yeah, though. that too. It's <laughs> so it's like when you say it's the best Star Wars Disney movie, but that you can't remember a single thing in it. I'm just my mind is blown by that. <laughs> That's comparable to the worst Marvel movie. Hmm. I, think. I don't think so. There, there. I mean, the worst Marvel movie is either Thor: The Dark World, Ant Man, or The Incredible Hulk. But no one even considers The Incredible Hulk. Oh, so. solo game? No, no, no. It's <laughs> it's definitely not a, a Han Solo game at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> well. We can't really confirm that. We don't know. <laughs> it's it's but, more, yeah yeah. It's more well, more than likely not. Yeah, it's like no. I don't know why they would make a game surrounded by that. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm thinking based off what we know with a respawn, it's going to be a first person shooter, of course. Not like Battlefront Two, where you have the option of going first person and third person. It'll be straight up a first person shooter. With the uh, ball field they have set up, I have no All idea. Right. I mean, it's, it looks really dumb. We're seeing the first clip for the cringe compilation by Kroby Cat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's literally the best thing to open on. It's just someone screaming. The um, what was I saying? Though? I don't remember. I ho I hope there's uh more to expect from what they have to show for uh indie games and oh yeah i was gonna say if they can recapture not not that it's even it's not the same developers but if they can recapture the magic of some of the star wars games like uh jedi academy uh the shooting in those ones were pretty exceptional for the time for the time you know the multiplayer right. in those ones was fun the um, lightsaber play was god tier though yeah yeah so if they can achieve something like that if that's their end goal is modernizing something like the Jedi Academy games, that'd be pretty dope. Uh, 33 Degrees, just going back real quick. The movie still hasn't made its money back because the budget cost was inflated due to needing to reshoot basically the entire film. Oh my god. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh... <laughs> also, that's the exact reason Disney's giving to investors is that they didn't market it well and that's why it's failing. Which is not... The complete truth, clearly, but... I'm just very happy me and my children know that Lando Carician is a robosexual. Oh my god. Remaster the original Battlefront soon and everyone will be happy. They could... They could... I'm so upset over what happened to Battlefield 2. Because, uh, GameSpy went down. And... Battlefront 2? Yeah, yeah, and GameSpy went down, and then GMG said that they were hosting the servers... Was it GMG or GOG? It was probably GOG. Yeah. And the servers that provided by GOG and that company don't work. They're trash. So the the, the hosted servers on Battlefront 2 right now are complete garbage unless you use um, Evolve or a tool like that, Tungle. Mass Effect Trilogy Remaster would be cool. You know why that's... Here's here's the downside of that is it won't come with the DLC again. They're gonna, they're gonna re-release Bioware points. Yeah, that's a mistake. God. Yeah, it'd be cool. 
but it won't include the DLC. And and that's it. It won't. I need to throw this plate away. I will be right back. And when I was um, what will happen following Andromeda? That's a good question because Casey Hudson is now back at Bioware, but he's working on Anthem. But I don't, I don't expect yeah. Anthem to have like a serious narrative to it. But I mean, Stormblood had a very really dope narrative to it, so it's not entirely impossible. Like that was the first time I was really feeling something for like a massive multiplayer story with Stormblood and Final Fantasy XIV in general. I don't doubt the possibility. Something, some story beats of Destiny are really cool, specifically in two, not really in one. Uh, but the Mass Effect series, I don't think would be dead because Mass Effect Andromeda was uh, the best-selling game in the series uh, before launch. It was just a disappointing game. It's a, I don't like to talk about it. It's a dark time. Uh, what do we expect out of the sports games? Uh, the usual. They'll have one football they come up, we'll interview him, the football will be like, gosh guys, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I, I play FIFA all the time, uh, it, it's just like playing real football. This is the executive producer, Nick. Marcus. Hey Nick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, They'll probably See. still be on Switch. Because the those sports games they put on Switch actually sold incredibly well in the U.S. Yeah, I can I can imagine they'll still be on Switch, which is pretty surprising, but like a lot of people have Switches, so I guess people really wanted their sports games on Switch. You know, good for them. Um, more su Switch support in general. I have a switch. Good for you, Dub. Do I have you added doubles? We need to play FIFA 19 and WWE sometime together. Oh, don't play WWE on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I heard that was awful. That was a patch. <laughs> it, it apparently, like, you'd go through like someone's entrance, it would be like five frames a second. Oh man, that's great. It's a bit of a mystery, yeah, and yeah. what's even more of a enigma about it is the competitive scene for sports games have been around longer than, I think, any other a competitive sports scene, and it's still massive, and it's kind of crazy. Did you guys hear about NBA 2K? Not really. Oh, I didn't know. They, they have their own esports league for NBA 2K. And that's been going on for a couple weeks now, I think. Uh, viewership is not good, clearly. <laughs> but I'm I'm just surprised someone's like, yeah, let's do this. With NBA. And yesterday I saw a tweet, official tweet, uh, of Deadpool 2 on a special cover of the newest NBA game, which was <laughs> Will they invent a new sport? If they do a, a a rugby game, there you go. Rugby, uh, billiards. <laughs> Should they? Uh, kickball. Oh yeah, let's get an EA kickball <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get FIFA Streets Four? Uh. Here comes the Sims Five. FIFA Streets would. Is there is there not a street mode in any FIFA game? Like there is no, an the, NBA. No, there was oh. literally FIFA Streets. Huh. That was a game. When? Uh, I could not tell you. It was on PS2, I believe. Let me go hmm. grab them. I think there was two of them. There was two NBA Street or uh, NFL Street games. Let's see. Oh, wait, Doraki. I don't know if you're joking about that or not, but I do want to see that. <laughs> Maybe not from EA, but uh, curling is cool. Splatoon has made me hate it, but sure. I'm pretty sure it's done <laughs> in a Mario game with all the Olympic games. 
Oh, I'm sure at least one of them have it. Yep. There they are. There was four FIFA Streets games. One in 2005, wow. that went on to have FIFA Street 2 and 3, and then there's a reboot in 2012, and then they gave up on the idea. Do you think we don't have that in the US? Because I've never heard of them. Uh, I'm thinking they're just old. Yeah, yeah but I was they're... paying attention to games back then, and I haven't heard of this, them. This was, yeah, released in North America February 28, 2006. Oh, wow. Well, just a little advertising. I guess so. Crazy. It was a really stupid game because, like, as like kind of implied, it was on the streets as such. So it was like those like really like really tight courts where you could just bounce off the wall. Mm -hmm. So you didn't pass people; you could just bounce off the wall around people and just walk to the goal. Sounds fun. Yeah, it was quite fun. You're quite fun. Need, need to play that on Parsec. <laughs> there are other. Um, I think it's NBA Playgrounds. That'll be on Switch. That looks all right. I want, I want an NBA game like that. So this guy or, is so tall compared to the both of these people. Oh my god. Yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that's just that guy is really tall, and they are of average height. I guess we'll keep this oh, here now because we only have Sims uh, expansion. Eight minutes or so. Oh, yeah, we, should, we should double check all the times are just in case. Yeah, we're Let's good. See we're good. Else. Um, I was at like eight something. I don't know. Then the Sims thing popped up and it got rid of the timer. I'll just mention what time after the trailer's done. Or I guess I could say when I see people again. I see a big house that's changing in the seasons. Yep. House, snow. Yeah, I just got the house. kids. Yep. All right, so we're all synced up. Present. Yeah, Mistletoe. basically. Kiss. I thought they go, up, they go upstairs. Ahead, but... They get fucked. They make a baby. I didn't see that at all. Hey, wait a minute. <gasps> bees! I hope there's <laughs> death by bees in The Sims now. Oh, definitely. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Ever devolving game. I'm extremely pissed off that you can't have pets without paying for it. 40 fucking dollars or 20 dollars. I forget where the quote came from, but every time they release a new Sims game, they take like two steps forward and then 20 steps back. It's. Ugh. It's ridiculous. I can't, I, would... I can't believe you can give someone superpowers by shocking them. I was looking at the DLC again because they've released a lot more. I only have the base game. Uh, if you want all the content, if uh, ignore that they have like one or two bundles that'll save you like 20 bucks. It's like $460 to have all the content right now. God. Fuck that. People, so people bad. complain about Train Simulator. Yeah, well, I mean, that's like a simulator game, I guess, and uh, it's still a scam, but the, the sim should not be like that either. It's gotten really bad, but the thing is, The Sims is not really... It's a mainstream game that's never talked about, so everyone that plays it just buys into it anyway. There's no complaints, I'm pretty sure. Or if there are, it's just, it's not even a vocal minority that complain. You just have the super casual people playing it. They've just accepted it. Sims, the ever-devolving game. Yup. And they, they've taken a new approach, though. I'm thinking this is probably costing more than uh, when you got The Sims 3. Because with The Sims 3, they'd always release an actual expansion. Whereas with The Sims 4, they have three different types of DLC. They have... Uh, a stuffs pack, which is just items. Uh, a, I think it's like places pack or something, which is just different items plus a couple different places sometimes, and then expansions that actually add new features normally, plus some of the other stuff. So they've, they've found a way to cut up the DLC even further. Because there's actually, for example, this is one of the extreme versions I found when looking at the DLC. You know how there's a pets expansion? Mm -hmm. There's a stuff pack specifically for the pet expansion. Uh, <laughs> Whereas 
before the pet stuff, there's stuff packs that don't really go with any of the other expansions. They're just, if you want these extra items, you can get them. So it's just, it's silly. It's ridiculous. They're literally, it's just cutting DLC from DLC is insane. But EA managed to do it. Everyone's doing it. Come on, let's get to it. That's right, playing the games. How about playing the games way Here, before they pull up uh, TC. So we got EA play testers and EA game changers. Hey guys, QA, Q, Q, what's the word? Yeah, QA our game for us. Maybe you live in the United States, Canada, Sweden, Australia, London. EA has studios in all those locations that make it Just on our loot boxes. <laughs> Oh no. Let's, let's have a look at the site then. <laughs> I joke EA like you actually pay for QA. Why? Because you can possibly test games from the comfort of your own home. You don't even need to leave the bed. You can just be hanging out in your jam jams, testing video games, giving your feedback. But how, can, how can you test them when you have to go to areas for them? I'm looking at the website, it's like location, Stockholm. <laughs> it's a real big thinking emoji. I, I said this off stream chat, but the EA, you, we were talking about how, or I was talking about One how maybe time. they'll learn eventually. How, uh, what customers react to and they'll change. But then yesterday they had a in company. EA Game Changers Award Show. Only a few minutes away. And. Oh, uh, fuck those uh, chairs is, they're sitting in. Is it TOS? I don't know. I, I said they basically were jerking themselves off. No, that's yeah. fine. I think, right. like, I think one of my favorite things I read about recently was. Uh, I was talking with a friend, Indy, about uh, a game came out recently called Agony. That apparently came out, like, disappointed a bunch of people. Oh, I know people. what game. Yeah, and apparently, apparently, like in the like press release thing for it, it's like, yeah, the the QA guys, they they were they were talking about issues for the game and such, but we listened to a member of our design team instead who thought everything was perfect. So they basically ignored everything from the QA guys. <laughs> nice. Terrible. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And so now we have this festival here. Gaming, music, it's great Where is EA in the evolution process of humans? So, Are they still hominids? I'm thinking they still like think the Earth's know. flat, if that's what um, you mean. Like the transformation of the venue. Uh, flat like a football field, am I right, people? Is that what people that, that, that play football believe? It's a really good time. If they, do you think if there's a football player on 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 stage, he's going to announce the Earth is flat? PS the NFL is already dealing with a lot of shit right now when it comes to people kneeling. I don't think they can handle someone that thinks the Earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> I don't think they're prepared. Oh, uh, God. Hey, what's real racing? Let's talk about that instead. Real Racing 3. Alright, we, we're going live over in a minute. Any new drink, inside. oh god. Let's head inside and check out the show. Listen to the Persona 3 OP. Or the Persona Dancing OP. Yeah, that one's really good. Alright, everyone. It's, it's I almost said Microsoft time, but it's EA time. I really was not actually thinking of The Sims, but I think, I guess there is going to be quite a bit of Sims here. Probably not too much. Yeah, here we go. I made it back just before their intro. It is a... It, it is. It did come out, like, a lot of years ago, didn't it? About three or four? Oh, hey, that, that looks kind of neat. Yeah, too bad it's going to look like shit for people that's actually there. 
Yeah. I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is Anthem. Yeah, well, the people that are there aren't the yeah, ones making like the cringe compilation, so... Anthem or Titan? Yeah, yeah, probably Anthem. I was gonna say, or Titanfall. But I'm pretty sure Anthem. That looks like Anthem. If yeah, that's the, the kind of creatures Anthem has, that's pretty cool. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? So that was Anthem. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Oh, I forgot so, about Andrea. Well, welcome everybody to EA Play. I'm Andrew and, and while you might recognize me from the gaming community, I'm kind of a new face around here. So this year, EA wanted to change things up because they know that I'm both a gamer and a fan. Invited, so I, invited I think you mean the, the word is paid? I think, is be I think you mean you exposure. Because we're about to kick the press conference off. But before we do that, EA Are they paying her more than, than Machinima did? About to watch. Right behind Oof. these doors, there is a fan fest outside and it is huge this year. It's a full three-day gaming festival where thousands of gamers can come and play games for free. Now, inside the theater here, there are I have an Xbox of community and members doubles. from all over well, the good. world who are going to be capturing, streaming, and getting their first impressions of the games that we're going to be showing off here today. But before we can get to Hope that, it's reveals, of course, we're going to kick things off with a look at Battlefield 5. Oh, we're going straight into that. Trevor Noah okay. gave you the first look. Yeah, we can clap it up. Yeah, let's just start with the Last first hour. Month, but we've got some new stuff to show you yeah, today. Yeah, there you go. Then we're going to move on to FIFA 19. Rocket Power and Power boy, Hour. do they have some big news, you guys. Any World Cup fans? You guys excited? But hey, this yeah, plays awesome. into what I was talking about earlier with what they then may show at the two end. two new <laughs> indie games to share, and then I'm going to come back towards the end of the show with some of my favorite developers to give Look you guys like a guys nice fidgety right right there. look at Anthem. And of course, yeah, we got the woos for Anthem. I'm into it. You want to <laughs> do this with me? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's going in the compilation. Snap. Yep. That's going in the crazy compilation. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord. All right. Andrea announces herself playable in Battlefield 5 <laughs> and the crowd riots. <laughs> Isn't that what they uh, did with Battlefront 2 story mode? They had the woman that plays the main character there? Yep. She yep. came out in, uh, she came out in, I think, full armor. I think they took a helmet off. Yeah, something like that. Some oh, type yeah, of suit. Yeah. Huh? Right, it's time to kick Slow this thing off. Slow pan It's been two weeks since the reveal of Battlefield 5. It's only you been two weeks since the reveal, It's been exciting, Damn. it's been a lot of speculation, and so You know, we thought we'd show off more of the gameplay before people trailer. got really angry, thinking but the game was only women. So, and lots we're of questions here. From the community. And we've heard you, yeah, the Discord overlay is different, I'll type innovations. out how. We want to know how customization actually works, and we want to know more wow. about unsurprisingly, it's not just women in the game. So today, Shocking. If you don't want to play a woman, you don't need to be one. The wow. And most immersive battlefield yet. It certainly is. You will be able to see this, I want to see. Smash through windows to okay, there we go. Oh, and they cut away from first Where person right away. the fences were stationary. You will now be able to move these weapons See, around that's on the neat. battlefield and gain advantages. And our hey, it's back. Is back and yeah. Whoa, yeah, they're cool. So, well, well, we uh, that looks kind of. But uh, yeah, here we go. Stay yeah. Through those buildings. Oh, I'm right. You will now be able to customize your soldiers, the wow. vehicles, and your weapons, not only for the gameplay but for the looks. As part of our the structure of those buildings was kind of really, really and solid. The tip of the iceberg in Battlefield 5. I don't know, they looked a little liquid to me. Maybe a bit gaseous. But would, like, our uh, old houses so like that not just collapse? In War Stories. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they were, so like, half we of it was still standing up. About those untold stories that got us excited oh, well. to start with on this game. It's about... What you will see is really those moments of human heroism. It is about witnessing the war through the eyes of the men and the women who shaped the world forever. Real and, real and relatable people facing the brutality of war. We I feel like I can relate to someone who's been shot in the head a few times. Look at, uh, the war story yeah, I, I can really relate to someone who uh, gets tomorrow. lit up by bullets and then comes back like everything's okay tomorrow. with a cricket bat. So, our launching October is just the beginning. I want to be that we'll badass. We'll go on an expanding journey to the Death Second dealer. World War. No loot boxes, 
Nobody Instead, you have to not. pay for your DLC, you cheap fucks. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all cosmetic. Transactions come in. Every day, we'll I, cosmetic. I find it bad that we actually have to that cheer journey, that there are no loot boxes. Yeah, I, I yeah. Know a lot of you have been asking for. Mm -hmm. it's there it is. Royal. Boo! Get off the stage. <laughs> it's it's royal reimagined for Battlefield. So we bring those pillars of battlefield. Nah, fuck off. Let's see it. Let's see it. You're giving me battle royale with destructible environments. Let's see so it. Hey, wait a we minute. Bring you experience that you haven't played Shit. before in battlefield or anywhere else. <laughs> but more about that later this year. Oh my! What? So that, okay, sure. Whatever. It's time to show you what makes battlefield so special. It's the unmatched intensity of our multiplayer sandbox, and this time it's even more epic. Fighting across multiple maps. And yeah, modes. no one was surprised Welcome about Battle Royale from Battlefield, right? <laughs> we did it, Reddit. This is your first look at ground operations, <laughs> and this time, even featuring music. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how games will be for the next few years, maybe. Well, I mean, the the Battle Royale is fun. It's a fun mode. Right, I think it's more like... It depends on the arcs If execution. everyone picks it up, is this what we're going to be stuck with? We're going to be years? stuck with first-person shooter games? Man, I wonder when first-person shooter games will die out. Now, it depends on their execution, because, like, we talked but, about the I mean, one. The first-person has become more of a genre, whereas Battle Royale is also a genre, but... It's a game mode. basically shrinking... It's a game mode. I'm sick of Team Deathmatch. I guess C CTF Wait, you're, you're was... You're further uh, shrinking what's available is all I'm saying. CTF was uh, kind of a trend. If everyone's putting money and resources into Battle Royale, how much variety will there be? Yeah, there... I mean, I don't even... So it is... Okay, I don't well, this think it's is, a huge worry, but it's definitely something to watch out for. If they put... It depends how much focus they put onto it. And but a lot of it's exacerbated. Sorry for talking about over that trailer, but it's not gameplay, so... <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, nothing's narrative. Oh, okay. So we'll see more tomorrow. Neat. Not at their own conference? Alright, sure. Oh. Well, they did that with Anthem, too. Last year. Hmm. Oh boy, oh, sports more boys. football stories. So what's Sim chat up to? Oh, I'll talk about blue balling. Um, I can't wait for this football story to be beginning the game at a young age, becoming an alcoholic, getting fucked up on drugs, and then becoming a professional football player. I hope all the trailers have subtitles. And Doubles. Xbox needs something, Austin. Come on, be easy on them. The Xbox conference <laughs> is... An hour and 40 minutes. I think they got plenty. Oh god, Dandy, don't even joke about that. <laughs> oh god. The, I feel, what if that's what Konami does with Metal Gear? They just go with whatever fads and... Uh, they, they, they tried survival. Next would be Battle Royale. Metal huh? Gear Battle Royale. <laughs> I'm pretty upset they missed the MOBA boat. <coughs> God damn it, Metal Gear MOBA. <laughs> Actual title, Metal Gear MOBA. Oh, is it time Are for these a football guys at a wedding? stage? That's what I'm saying, I don't like those chairs. Yeah, those look uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh my god, Pedal. they did all that music for the stupid trophy. <laughs> we, we awarded ourselves the trophy of saving video games. <laughs> That's the UEFA Champions League. The oh, this is an actual trophy. Football. This is an EA thing. The okay, clubs never mind. Yeah, what did you... Yeah. The game like I, I'll take it back. And did you I think thought it was, it was some problem? dumb EA thing. The world's biggest league joins the world's game. And a special thanks to the legendary Hans Zimmer and LA's own Vince Staples for collaborating with us on the trailer. 
And I really love the trailer because it captures our epic vision for how the Champions League comes to life in FIFA 19. And Lena's going to tell you a little bit more about that. That ain't Spike Lee. As Aaron said, the UEFA Champions League is an amazing addition for the game. It's where football's biggest heroes like Ronaldo and Neymar clash every year. And it's the place where champions rise. And you've been asking for this for a long time, and we are thrilled that it's here. And that's why we're bringing the Champions League across the game. <coughs> It'll be an authentic Champions League tournament mode. Is GZB going to make an obese gamer trophy? That's what the, that's what the four-year sub-badge will be. Glory in your story mode, it'll just journey. be like a hamburger in FIFA on top of a, a soda, and then there's like a, a wreath of fries around it. Brave, the badge is like 16 by 16 pi pixels. And all that I almost well, said I pickles. We were about the physical one. As you know, the heart and soul. <laughs> yeah, sixteen by sixteen game. pickles. We'll be we'll be in year, good we're shape. You the tools to control the pitch in every moment, from your tactical approach to the match to each technical touch. And we know how passionate you are about gameplay, so we've worked hard to biggest trophy in Europe. Refine our vision. Yeah. For FIFA 19. I've seen bigger. Put from our community. What game do you need to hundred percent for that platinum trophy? To detailed <laughs> feedback sessions with FIFA pros. <laughs> And we're going to be sharing a lot more about gameplay throughout the summer, but what I can tell you right now is that the quality bar in gameplay was raised yet again this year. So we look forward to everybody experiencing the game on the hands-on sessions this week. And also, of course, we're extremely excited. What if some random guy just ran up on stage to try to grab the trophy? I feel like he'd be kicked and in that's the dick. Our FIFA 19 news I feel he'd be kicked in a lot of places. But I just wanted to take and out. To pause and reflect and around. I just feel like standing next to this what, trophy is a little what, bit surreal. What's something you should not do with the you know, highly regarded trophy? Put it in an event that probably has very little security with gamers. <laughs> oh, there's club, no way it's little it's security. The pursuit of Champions League glory. But yeah, I get what you mean. But for your like, country, well, compared to trophy. what other football <laughs> events the would have this trophy in, I mean. Yeah, yeah. And with the tournament mm, yeah, starting actually. in just five days, we're excited for the world to compete for it in FIFA 18. As you can imagine, all of us... Or on maybe they're all like Twitch chat, who cares about a stupid cup. cup. So, you know. <laughs> I don't, maybe that's why. <laughs> oh, man, I can imagine the Twitch chat right now. ...experience on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PS, PC, and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> But you can take Ronaldo and Portugal to their first World Cup victory. We did it, Switch Bros. Or you can write your own story with some great nations who didn't qualify this year. Or you can make a crazy dream a reality for your home country like mine. Iceland, <laughs> Iceland ain't fucking winning a trophy. Get the fuck out of here. A nation of only 350,000 people would ever qualify. And you can feel their excitement. I love seeing the same model a hundred times in the crowd. Apologies to any England fans in the room, that might still sting. <laughs> <laughs> and Lena isn't the only one who's excited. FIFA 18 players are loving the World Cup experience so far. But we don't want to stop there, we want to invite everyone to come and join the celebration. So I'm pleased to announce that for a limited time, FIFA 18 complete with the entire World Cup experience is available for a free trial on PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, and on PC through Origin. FIFA's Access. on PC? Yeah, you can download and yep. play the entire game right now. This is our next game night. Not on Switch? Yeah. They didn't put the free trial on Switch? Look, they had their little trial with the Switch so to they announced. The trial, we've got some yeah, and it was sold really well. Years. Fuck this. We're going to be playing live at the end of the show, <laughs> representing their nations. In a I wouldn't be surprised if they bring Origin Access to the and Switch this eventually. And bring so much more for FIFA fans. Maybe. Maybe. I'm glad they're giving 2018 FIFA for free, because uh, I really got to save that money for the, the meantime, for the loot boxes. Let's all enjoy the World Cup. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll What'd you say? Uh... You know. Hasta la vista. Oh, shit. Shit. Copyrighted music. Fuck. Fuck. Play the tune. Rest uh, in peace. We're on the stage at the World Cup. We haven't been here in four years and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> It's the oh no, it's him! Get off the stage. 
team. You know, the FIFA community never rests. 20 million people from 60 this countries. This is the CEO. Play competitive leagues this year. You want to address, well, the you know, team never all the backlash either. you've had Winning over the, the last League year, dude? The you know, we've had a really great so year. Greatness to FIFA this year. <laughs> we can't wait for you to experience it all. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but I want to welcome <laughs> Chat, you scam to EA Play. Boss. It's our third EA Play and <laughs> our second one in Hollywood. <laughs> we couldn't be more excited to have you with us to share all the games that we have to show you. We've got lots to do, but before we get before we Scam move on, Lord. I'd like to share just a couple of Dirt things. Peg. Oh, the Chet's not having it. The consumption of entertainment media in the last five years is Satan. a combination of streaming plus subscription. As consumers, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music, reading books has never been easier. And we believe that disruption is going to be a, have a profound impact on our industry in the next few years. And so over the last couple of weeks, you will have seen that we announced a new team from Israel has joined Electronic Arts to help our investment Why? to extend our thinking All right, that didn't look as good as our thought, thought it would. into this cloud gaming world. Let me get another image. For many people, that's going to mean uh, extending never the experiences they already play on other platforms. To be a giant For others, it's going to mean new games oh, yeah, and yeah. new modalities of play across a whole variety of platforms. But for everyone, it's going to mean playing games, anywhere, anytime. So this week, we've got a tech demo running. Um, all of our games streaming in HD from the cloud to multiple devices that you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Uh-oh, Ubisoft. Now, it's not quite ready for full market prime time yet, but it is a promise of what we hope to bring you in the future. The second part of that, of course, is subscription. And we started subscription a number of years ago, and many millions of you have signed up and experienced the joy of being able to have Does full anyone remember access on live? to a great catalog yes. of games. Today, I wish it it's finally becoming mainstream. <laughs> access premiere. So In the form of every other company it. doing it. Origin Access Online Premier will, will change bring you forever all of our new PC games, out. starting with Madden NFL, <laughs> back on the PC for the first time in over a decade. <laughs> Shouldn't it be like Madden then 26 or 7 now? They had a Madden 25. And of course, Anthem. And there'll be many okay, more can we get a different picture for Anthem? That looks like Second, shit. Second, you get access to The Vault, our library of over 100 games <laughs> from EA and other publishers. And third... It will launch later this summer. Until we shut down so the service later in the year, and take away the games forever. Right now and experience the benefits and joys of subscription, come in and play a free trial of Origin Access, our base subscription, this weekend. Thank you and have a great show. No way, no, no, I was still getting the... Uh, Glad we get to see a CEO in person at an event in front of actual people who play games and don't want to address anything about you know trust do you think you'll come back no i think it physically yeah. harm if he said they had they had to quickly usher him outside there's already snipers taking aim there's more security for him than the cup Well then, I'll just use this on the next person that comes out. Oh, you better run for your life. Hey, everybody. Steven coming after Mumble Rappers. What's up? So I'm here, sitting inside the crowd at EA Play, and I just happened to find oh, Mr. Here we go. Vince Sampella here. In you the know, he, he was just Lisa. sitting in the crowd. What's you just wanted to watch the conference. Today? Oh, you have something to show us. I love this stuff. I love seeing new games. I mean, someone's super excited about that man on new PC, New Anthem trailer? Right? No, yeah. technically not. So, um, you guys may have seen that uh, Vince I feel like I recognize the guy that's looking right in between the two of them. a bunch of speculation. So, uh, well, you want to just get right to it? He looks like Jeremy sure. Renner's stunt double. I mean, we're not ready to show there all go. of our stuff yet. We're working on a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. The teams are kicking ass. But we wanted to bring a little tidbit. So we've been working with Lucas on getting right. the name and kind of the setting for what our Star Wars game is going to be. And we're going to talk about it. It is right Star Wars. Now. Oh, you guys got yeah. any guesses? I bet you the, the internet is Did you know wild that? right now. I hope so. We just got that confirmation, right? So the Star Wars name is. So. Jedi we, we knew they were working on one. We knew Respawn Woo! was. So Star Wars 
Jedi yeah, they had like five different yeah. companies so working on Star Wars titles. And oh, yeah. oh, two years ago, right. when they were showing the little montage, like, they yeah. were one of the companies that showed up. <laughs> so that's why I was thinking it was Star so Wars Vince, this year. You got, a, you got anything else? Jedi well, Fallen Order does sound like times, what I was talking about. Trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedis are being hunted, so. It's going oh, to be so this is between. So for all the, the, the hardcore four. nerds out there who want to know, like, where in the timeline, like, what between which episodes? Hey, is it? I said it before between he did. Between three <laughs> and four. Okay. <laughs> all right. Between three and four. That's yeah, we're hunting down time. Jedi. That's the only time it takes place. No? It's not a nice. It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> he's just shaking his head. <laughs> yeah. And he's smiling Bad about time. it. It's a dark it's time. It's fucking awesome. It's all dark and serious. It's amazing. And EA is gonna ruin it, but. Respawn's right, gonna so do I everything think they can. Are now anxiously want to know, like, what, when can we play the game? Uh, it will be holiday of next year, 2019, not this year. I'm not surprised. So, sorry to dash any hopes. No. <laughs> but now that we know, we can set expectations. We're all gonna be amped up, and uh, hopefully, we'll hear from more from you maybe uh, maybe next year. Oh yeah. Well, Vince, <laughs> it was great to see you. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Uh, we do have a little bit more news on Star Wars, so I'm going to toss it over to Dennis. Well, then, yeah, what other Star Wars stuff we got? All right. Well, what they're going to show Battlefront 2, so I'll just say well, it never on mind. what they said on Twitter. The game they're working on, it's called Jedi Fallen Order. My name is mm -hmm. Dennis. They, they said that. Dice oh, they did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm really happy Oops. and excited to be here today. I was too focused Thank watching so Vince's face. He just wouldn't stop smiling. <laughs> so we launched our game in November of last year, and clearly we didn't get it quite right. <laughs> so instead of coming out of the gate sprinting like we really wanted to, we had to take a step back and step make back. sure that we Can were delivering the game so that our players really wanted. So we decided to completely overhaul our progression system, and add a bunch of new character cosmetics for better. players to collect. Much instead. better. So from there, we added a new hunt mode inspired by the original Battlefront games that I loved personally. This was actually a fun starting mode from with what the I was watching. On Endor. And <laughs> thank you. Uh, we, um, it turned out to be by far the most popular update of the game, and the team loved building. Yeah, Ewoks. let's keep watching these five seconds back. So, as you might know, we're currently in our Han Solo season with content from the movie coming next week. It's headlined by the new planet Kessel, a really dangerous. The DLC is coming next week, and not the movie. It features the return of one of our favorite modes, Extraction. So, looking forward a little bit. This summer, we will be introducing a new squad system to the game, which will allow you to team up much easier and play with your friends. We're also adding a new Starfighter mode focused around dogfighting with your hero ships. And looking ahead a little bit more, we will also be delivering a new large-scale multiplayer sandbox experience focused around capturing command posts and attacking and taking out Ooh, capital ships. They're saying some words. But that's not all. That sound very uh, Battlefront, at least. You have been asking for new heroes, villains, and planets. It's too late personally, a but hey. That features a very iconic Star Wars conflict. So I'm excited to confirm that Battlefront 2 this year will be going deep into the Clone Neat. Wars. <laughs> it's only fitting that we begin on the planet Geonosis, featuring multiple levels, including the largest level we have ever built for Battlefront. So let's talk about the heroes and villains. First, let hey. me introduce the there most he is. powerful droid, <laughs> the leader of the most powerful Remember droid everything in else the is galaxy, General Grievous. Alternate universe. And yes, he will be going up against my own Except personal this. favorite, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hey, Spaghetto. Welcome. Finally making his debut in Battlefront. Man, Obi he looks so much like Obi Wan Kenobi. We're, we're, we're not done. That's not can we? They can we see him? Alone. Joining them is nope. the Dark Can we? Man, Obi Wan, yeah. oh. Obi -Wan Kenobi looks a lot like Channel Green. Okay. <laughs> well, as someone to bring balance to the can Force, Obi Wan's unruly Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, characters, the, the thing. The team at home is Great. extremely excited to be building all of these cool things. 
EA and DICE are committed yeah, man, to just Battlefront. just a little bit too late. We had a rough start, but I, I really think took... that this game has a bright future. Thank you very much for playing the game, providing us with your feedback, talking to us. Together, we will make this as the greatest game that we can possibly build. There would be no Battlefront without you. So thank you. May the force be uh, with you. Uh, what, was trying to say. Shoot, what was I trying to say? Good question. Fuck. Was it about Anakin? Maybe. What the fuck is this? Unravels. Hey. hey. Oh, there he is. I hope he comes out on stage again. All right, guys. Everyone, put your surprise faces on. All right. Yeah. Oh, it's Whoa. unravel again. Whoa. Whoa. I, I didn't know. I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we saw it this morning. <laughs> yep. Uh, it was raided by the yeah, ESRB. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe it. It looks adorable. I hope they bring they're, they're gonna bring out that one guy again. They have to. I mean, he sort of stole the show. Oh my god, is Yarny fucking dead? <laughs> well, it's not the same guy. Hi. It's, it's is really it? good to No, see it's the same guy. Uh, <laughs> I was really In hoping... Rubble, we no, use to yarn to symbolize love and the bonds between people. In our new game, <laughs> we, we tear Aww. that bond up right at the start. Um, you lose everything, including your spark. But when things are at their darkest... Co-op! You find I imagine. And you form a new bond. And your spark is rekindled. God. And it leads you off on an adventure. So welcome to Wait. Unravel 2. Isn't that how... <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to say Hey, we got Netflix Chaos. It's a game about fresh starts and second chances. These two little souls who refuse to give up and who build something new and beautiful together. And the whole game is inspired by that spirit of optimism and togetherness. You see, it's all made to be played with two characters. You can play it alone, or you can play it in co-op with a friend. But there's That's always cool. two characters there, sharing one yarn and working together to was, get through uh, this adventure. Was that Brothers game co-op? This game, it's quite different uh, from wait, the first. Or yeah. Brothers it's, no, it's both friendlier uh, yeah, wait, it was and more challenging. The first one. But above all, uh, Brother Tales of Sons, that was, yeah, it, it was and, like you use like one controller for it. Okay, okay, just making sure. And I want to show it to you now, so I, I brought some help. Uh, this would so be a good Switch game. Michael to the stage. I have some unfortunate news, Master Chef. So a producer at Coldwood. <laughs> I have some pretty terrible news. And we're going to try to show you a little EA bit of hates money. About, about That's it. how you can play the game and, and yep. co-op with yourself, essentially. Well, they love money, just not in the way... That they should. It would sell so well on Switch. God. Yeah, I can't believe the they're debugging the game. Okay. Holy shit, they're debugging the game. There we are. No, that's okay. That's Appearance. okay. Appearance. So when you're playing it by yourself, you can essentially pick up the other character and carry them along through the more fast-paced segments Gross. of the game. That's funny. And we actually tried to include a bit more of those because we figured that since it's a co-op game, we wanted to have more like thrill and danger and kind of wild moments. I don't um, know how they wouldn't be sure about developing for like Switch when FIFA sold incredibly well on Switch. And other companies have proven that and then moving games over from more whatever areas, currently like exists console-wise to Switch is fairly easy. And switch back and forth between the two characters because that's how we've essentially designed all the developer friendly of the game, compared to the Wii and the Wii U. Together and helping each other out and utilizing this bond between you to overcome any obstacle that you come they across. Match the colors, it's you can play with the Joy Cons, and but that's that's maybe it'll so come I'll, later. I'll, I'll jump in at this. Yeah, come join me. So um, I'm gonna be the re red one. Okay, I'll be the blue one. I'll be blue. This is so insane. He not only got some sort of confidence, oh, so but he can play so live, it. too. <laughs> That's utterly impressive. Good on him. I think it's because he lost the doll. And the bird is back. Oops. 
I was honestly really hoping he would come out in like a car and he would have two babes around his arms <laughs> playing it, playing it and sunglasses. <laughs> I'll swing. All right. No, even better, it's this the blue and red unravel uh, guys in costumes. He has them around <laughs> his arms. And, and, and it doesn't have the eyes, it's just the face cut out and okay. he's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That'd be perfect. Otherwise, this looks cool. Okay, this is that the crow's gonna. Part. That's not a crow, but that bird's gonna kill him. It's a chicken. Got it. Its design's kind of sick. Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, they actually gotta outrun it. <laughs> I wanted to see him fail so oh, I can actually see what the well chicken does. Okay, I'll I'll go up and distract the grouse. You can. I'll sneak up here. What do you call it? A grouse. Oh, okay. Okay, your, your turn. Yeah. Stage you stage me. <laughs> there you Remember? are. Keep, no, keep him over to the left. <laughs> now I'll go. Alright. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh, and then the only thing from like the EA thing besides EA's reputation they can be held for is uh, advertising. Which, outside of the conference, I don't oh, think they did too again. well yeah. in marketing the first game. <laughs> oh, it's an indie game. They don't... That's true. So they that's don't a, really that's market a quick them. Little look that's true. At, uh, Unravel 2. They fund uh, them. That's at least they got a sequel! <laughs> and the studio yeah, isn't I, shut I, down I really yet. I hope you like it. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Before I go, I just want to send some, some love to the team back home because Working on this game has been an, a, a completely amazing team effort and so many levels, and everybody has worked so hard. So there, there's a bunch of us from Coldwood here, and, and thank you to those, and thank you to everybody back home, and thank you. Love you. Oh, what are you pointing at? No clue. At the respawn guy. <laughs> <laughs> They're both smiling at each other. <laughs> Shit, the awesome. music. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, the persona music. The music is pretty good. Yeah, it's a decent song. It fits the tone. We're gonna get striked. You pay for extra yarn. <laughs> oh man, yeah, some of these segments look pretty cool. Oh, lily pads, too. Let's just ride a goose. I thought UnravelGame.com was a subtitle. And the brilliant team at Coldwood, the great, the game is really strong. I felt, I felt the CEO guys, guys went and grew a beard. It's clear <laughs> that they have a lot of passion, and I can't personally wait to play Unravel 2 with my kids. But what's even more amazing is that we will make Unravel 2 available to everyone today. Yep, you heard that right. Oh, wow. You will be able to take these two Yarnies on their next big adventure. Start oh, sweet. Two. The game is finished, it's out. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> But it ain't on That's Switch! That's a nice little surprise. So thank you, Martin, and thank you to the team at Coldwood. Back in 2015, we started on this journey with the original Unravel to seek out the most creative, independent developers and bring them into our EA Originals program. It's been our I'm way of helping these creators bring their unique games to the world and to tell their stories. And last year, if you remember, Joseph Fares was up here on stage oh, God. presenting his team here at is a way out too. way out. Fuck the Oscars. And I think we all kind of remember that. Um, and you might even remember <laughs> him from the Game Awards as well. I think I did. Yeah, everyone remembers him. In March, that game caught fire. Uh, it's, it was in it. It's caught fire. Yeah, the fun, game caught fire or the guy that made it. New, and you all loved it. We he saw fired a lot of shots. In the first <laughs> and A Way Out is such a huge success that Joseph and his team 
are expanding and moving into a new stage. Please don't bring them on stage. So, so they're no longer like indie. So drive our industry. <laughs> and it's why we will continue to work with independent developers to help them realize their dreams. And then Which leads send us them on to their our own. next EA Originals title from a little game studio in Berlin called Joe My Games. When I met this team and I saw the game, I was instantly drawn to how personal this story was. It's one that tower carries a very powerful and important message. And it's unlike anything we have ever done. So please welcome Connie Gepper to the stage from Joe My Games to tell you more. I realize about probably should have been taking story. notes during this. Oh yeah, I forgot about taking notes. I did that last year. That's fine, I'll grab them there. Thank you, Patrick. Hey, another nervous person. <laughs> I still remember. It's always um, at EA. During the pitch, how enthusiastic it's Patrick the was. It's now. That afterwards, like our whole team, including me, we're super excited. It actually feels a little bit the same right now. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. Maybe a little too excited. <sighs> Thank you. Uh, we are Yumai, uh, a small indie game studio from Berlin, and we are developing Sea of Solitude, or SOS as we call it. The whole journey from the very first concept to actually becoming a part of EA Originals is simply amazing. Let me tell you more about. I can't believe they're already making a sequel to Sea of Thieves. When humans get too lonely, they turn into monsters. This is at the core of everything you will see, hear, and hopefully feel while playing SOS. What makes this underlying concept so important? Oh, I think they're nervous because so they don't. Is that Nearly put these people through practice. Can at least somehow relate to or remember they don't let them practice. The feeling of being lonely. In my case, I started writing the story when I felt the loneliest in my life. I think as an artist, you process your emotional world by letting it out uh, and putting it into your art. Um, I'm still amazed how like, the concept seems to just float out of me like uh, right into the hand and onto the paper. I think this is also why so many people can instantly connect with the game, because it's not a made-up story, even though that it takes place in a fantastic setting. In SOS, we try to show how people experience different kinds of loneliness, but also how outsiders, friends, and family see those who struggle. We achieve all this in playful ways so that players who want to simply enjoy a fantastic experience can do so. But player who wants to look a bit deeper can reveal a whole emotional world beneath it all. Sea of Solitude is about a young woman named Kay who is suffering from such strong loneliness that her inner feeling, the darkness, the anger, the hopelessness, worthlessness, turns to the outside, and she becomes a monster. Damn. The game is about finding out why this happened to her, but also how to turn her back into a human. Ultimately, the goal is to bring all those emotions into balance. Some needs to become bigger, some would be better off a little smaller, but to embrace I wanted Even to your see the game or your self doubt. They really In have the this trend of you embrace your joy. Developers your showing passion this but not gameplay. Is all about. And I don't want to be down about them being passionate. All about. But you. I want to see the game. I just wish they'd show gameplay while talking over it. So yeah, like, yeah. Like Nintendo would do. Like they it seemed like they were starting to go that direction because they had the little boat, but then they just focused on her. It's like Okay, I guess. But now we but have it, we so now we have it. Yeah. It looks pretty. I like the style. And touches my soul. I'm no child of destiny. The sea waves, yeah. The, 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 this game is also out today. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> so long now. 
I'm too weak to run. Yeah, yeah, this is cool. A new day is here. It looks like a puzzle game. But nothing is new. What was this? Alone in my room. I tremble. Early next year. It was a pretty game. Mm-hmm. Alright, here we go. It's yeah, I'm the, I'm the one. I'm the one. His jersey says it. We are the one. So wait. We can shut you down and we can so two different high companies high have the rights soul. to the NBA? Uh, probably. Or maybe this is not the NBA. Or is this, this uh, is NBA, yeah. college? Um, I'm assuming it's the NBA. If there's any other, if there's any other studio that has access to it, it's 2K. Because 2K yeah. do other sports games. They do the WWE games. <laughs> yeah. See, so instead of seeing instant replays, you see your play on Snapchat. wonder now what the difference is between NBA Live and NBA 2K. I'm pretty sure one's more arcade-like than the other. I forget, I have looked it up before. But... Oh, Madden Esports. It's a big night for Young Kiv. He's been stuck at the quarterfinals. And here he is now in his first championship game, looking to accomplish a goal. Third and four, throws it low. T.Y. Oh, drops it. That was a phenomenal read. And Trini's got the lead. 40 to 19. I hate losing way more than I love winning. Oh, we have a incredible matchup. It's I, a rematch. I think that's a common sentiment across the board. No, you, you don't understand how upset these, these players get at NFL because these games aren't too balanced. <laughs> I can't wait till they pull a wrestling gig and smash someone with a title belt. Holy shit. Oh, now he's here to brag? Great. Young kid, baby, how you doing? I've been good. You still recovered from that butt whooping? Wow, already started. Hit with the belt. Hi, everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, as you guys can see, king of touchdown celebrations. That's pretty fire. I like that. Kamehameha. One. <laughs> um, as you guys know, this is Young Kev, Madden 18. I think that's what Madden it was supposed Captain. to be. Like, give it up for Young Kev, y'all. They do that, yeah. Or Hadouken. Or Hadouken. Young Kev, how has it been, you know, your success and your path, you know, to where you're at today? Yeah, actual players uh, do that, and it's not like I've something they came up with uh, for the game. When I was in high school, I was playing baseball. Yeah, no, I know. Arm. I'm, I'm just for surprised chat. that uh, they first, put that in really the game bad. as well. I was getting blown out online, but I kept mm -hmm. at it. I put more and more time into it. But I, I just want to point out, this guy seems like a standard, the, the guy on the right. Wow. Okay. Uh, so the edgy team. Like, he has the already pre-cut pants. <laughs> That's number one. Number two. You said you had... <laughs> Gotta judge him so harshly. You can't beat You can't beat him, madam. I chased that money. I still got my diploma, I, but I chased that money. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> really care. You hate him because you weigh him. <laughs> they, awesome. they both okay, look like they jumped you, out of a you know, 90s magazine. Years, how has it been for you? I know you had some ups and downs. It's been tough. I've had a lot of devastation. Like we got the grunge so side on the, the on the right and, and then on the left out. side. It's the uh, uh, pop. He's rocking it though. That's awesome. I, that belt is, is. so amazing. There's a lot hey guys, I'm really struggling to talk belt. about my devastating <laughs> losses. I really can't well, speak any later than play, this. You know, but I have this title belt, so I think I'm doing okay. Super excited. Why is it a wrestling He doesn't have to speak. He's really good at Madden. Madden is love. He speaks with his Madden. I'm going to try taking this belt. Just takes it. And the guy doesn't put up a fight at all. Yeah, because he got the money, so that's all that matters at the end of the day. 
worked your whole life to get to moments like these. To the very top of the mountain. You can tell this is a video game because you'll never see a Cowboys player play like that. I can't believe Madden's gonna be the to best place. action game of the year. You've been told legends are born. They're using frostbite now? Has that been mm -hmm. happening? Yep. I feel, yeah, I was feeling deja vu. And you rise so that you can truly see. They're just it's basically so they're their really never about reaching the, end of the road. What, what would you want to call it? What trademark the engine? The moments that got you. The, the, like yeah, it's their trademark engine. It's their It's yeah, just really funny that it barely them. functions for anything else but FPS and I guess sports games. Well, I'm sure they've like iterated on it enough now so. where they could get it to work with a lot more. You're in their position. Yeah, well, until there's an RPG mode. Would you let the moment define you? Or would you define the moment? Sports ball! Yeah, I love sports ball! Nothing wrong with the sports game, by the way, chat, Hello, just to John. make that clear. It's just, uh, it's not Blood Bowl. They're the it's least entertaining, the Michael least Martinez. interesting How you doing today? I'm super of everything they always show. Yeah. We're gonna do this presentation a little oh, are we going to live cast FIFA games? A brand new mobile game in a live no, a mobile game. Head -to -head match. Michael, why don't you tell us the rules? Sure thing. The objective is straightforward. Destroy the opponent's base to win. Unit control, super simple. Just tap it, tap for destination. Show us the fucking game. Back. Thank you. The most efficient oh way God, to they're fucking the showcasing a mobile game as like an eSport. Um, yeah, I'm gonna they're gonna shoutcasting for it. To the I'm yeah, going to the bathroom. There's this surprisingly a a bar are too up many eSports mobile games. The missile, when the bar fills up, will fire the missile. Like it's game it ridiculous. To destroy the enemy's <laughs> base a mobile and win. game. And, this isn't on Switch either. I see these people like Let's getting get super match. serious Absolutely. while they're right, staring ladies, down at their phones. An awesome matchup lined up for you here today. Like they stream Fighting this for shit. The blue side of the room. If you could please give a cheer for one of the most formidable RTS players there is. Make some noise for In Control. It was about to actually get up, but then yeah. they get bring out In Control. Really? Not bought they out, but they the was formidable. They said one of the His most formidable. But like this game would, is definitely going to make money for him. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Nick at Night. A bang. In controls like an actual RTS player, and it sucks that he's now playing a mobile game, now, or is being is paid to play one right now. Yeah, That's well, he's got to put money on the money on the food yeah, no, table sometime. He's got to put right, food on the table ready? somehow. Let's uh, get this thing yeah. going. Ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Right, that's funny that they made him play on phones instead of fucking tablets. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's I was hilarious. saying. Genre. They they play these on their the phones and they look so to way too match. serious go. about it. As the players' bases have been okay, guys, welcome to the live shoutcast of this mobile game. You see the player on the left tapping the bottom of the screen a few times. He's sending troops to that middle section. They're shooting at each other. Competitive Cuban, let's go. Competitive Cuban. In a strategy game, that flank position, that in control is going from the top side. Also, very important as Nick and Knight's forces have to circle around the center. What a fucking joke. Jesus. name is Nick and Knight. Sorry. He's getting there. Here comes the AI with a rhino. It's gonna rip up. Watch out for his Cosby attack. Oh, they've done it again. And what's this? Gandhi's activated the nukes again. Management of your forces and protecting that economy as well. Nick and Knight with some attack bikes in the top. There he is. In control, placing the turret on the top. Like even the Twitch chat is saying it's boring. Well, of course they are. We can see that the missile is a competitive mobile game. And firing that, that takes out half your base. The most important objective on the map sense. is to hold it, it, those controls on. It's, right. it's, it's control, a casual a game taken right way too seriously. Yeah, he's done a great job of holding that down with the turret. And I hope they show their expressions because the it's even more hilarious. 
And as the economy ramps up, of course, we're seeing bigger, more powerful units come out. We have oh, he's really excited about the drill pod. See, it's sweet. It says, looks like something I'll gladly hit the skip ad button for. I can't wait for the face, the, the, the three-fourths angle of the face. He will have the missiles. We see it starts to point towards in control space. Let's see if in control can get around to that top corner, able to halt that missile. He does contest the missile, putting it into the yellow position. Yeah, very important, of course, blocking the, the pathing of those units is another big factor for this strategy. Holding those locations is so crucial as in control begins to Wish secure their the would text spot. them another right now. Come out from Nick at night to take it out, but now he's bringing out the pit bull as well to help lock down that north position. This missile is very, very close. I like how there's just one tank sitting on the bottom With left, one doing fucking place. nothing. He takes the top of that missile and then oh. fires. fires. Oh. Wow. And Nick at night, one shot away from being knocked out here. As the next one will start to ready up in just a moment's time. Oh, thank you. That's what we need to see. Artillery forces are doing a great job at taking right. control Nick of the map. All you gotta do is play the Andy Truman show. And we can see is there the really fog of war in this one screen? Those harvesters, of course, very crucial. <laughs> RTS. To protect those as your economy yeah, it's a super <laughs> serious <laughs> game. I guess for contrast purpose. Just spreading his forces out, trying to hold this advantage that he's had so far. Nick at Knight is trying to get in there, but there's a great turret placement from in control, blocking and just ripping through again those infantry. And we see in control now moving his tank forward. Fuck. Apparently the lights in the stadium are going nuts. Is that why the stream just buffered? Uh, to clean that out. uh yes, totally. <laughs> I'm just seeing people saying, like, the lights in it are going nuts. It's hurting their heads. Trying to scout out and you, see what your you would think they learned from last response. year so when trying to do Star Wars Battlefront 2 as an eSport. They're doing it for a mobile game. Looks like he's really it. Was it an even worse idea? Yeah, and they've been doing this for about a year now, apparently. Like with a bunch of other really terrible games. He doesn't want to engage with just one or two units. He wants to move all of them together, create a good flank position, and take over that side. And we're seeing the first mech unit from in control. This is the Wolverine. Gonna rip and this little watch out for this missile. Oh wow, what a shocker. It went to one and one. Alright. Or next missile is gonna end it. Oh, this is this is literally, literally Command and Conquer mobile. Oh. That is the name of this game. Nick at night's in a great time getting mapped. Presence and now also harassing the this is where yeah. Command and Conquer is in 2018. You ever wonder what it would be like if someone did commentary on a guy playing Smash Royale alone in a that bar? Just half halfway ready. Right. He's also bringing out his first air unit. Wow, deal with those a lot going on. Wow, there's there's so much going on here. It's not a good sign when even the shoutcast you paid sounds boring. Remember when Snoop smoked up the whole battlefield? There it is. He fired the missile. Wow! That scream what though! A, <laughs> there it is! <laughs> what, a, what an interesting match. I can't oh, wait to awesome. see this esports scene develop for the $5 trophy. Absolutely. That was Thanks awesome. So we saw a little bit of everything right there. Perfect. You will yeah. get Let's a gift card to Starbucks for $5. You will get 500 Bioware points. But I spent $50 to make sure I could actually compete at this level in this game. I'm Fuck it. It's Command and Conquer. Yeah, it is. Real time strategy experience. Command and Conquer 2018. Here we are. Someone just screenshot that image and say how to kill a brand. This is an easy step. This is the Metroid party, whatever 3DS game, all over again. But I'm excited to announce that Android players can play the pre-alpha today. So head to the Google Play Store, search Command & Conquer Rivals. The studio has been having an absolute blast playing this game, and we can't wait for you to play. When they say they're having a blast, is saying. it more like we need reviews for this game? So we said any comp or any person that reviews this under five stars is fired? It's more like playing it together at lunch sometimes. Is this Anthem? No, no this, this is, is the Command & Conquer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they all look the same there. Understandably, days. it's... Yeah. This is literally every fucking TV ad for a mobile game ever. Yep. Except with a little less budget. Because they haven't made the money yet. And this is going to be the best-selling Command & Conquer thing to ever exist. Unfortunately. Yeah, this is... 
This has less of a budget. It doesn't have Arnold uh, or or, um, or anyone else. James Corden. It, it will almost, soon, though. You know. It's it's what I always love between like the fucking mobile game trailers and the games themselves. Like, oh, Viking goes through and fucking annihilates everything. And as the gameplay at the end, just like Viking slowly walking up to a tower, king a few times, for a new walking forward again. Federation now, Force, yeah, that was the, the Federation the Force for Command and Conquer. Anthem, I wanted to share a few yeah. final things. Oh, he was escorted back into the building. Well, oh, oh even worse though, because it's, it's not even a game, planet, it's, who come it's a mobile game. Every day to it's a way of life, Pops. And what I can say about all of those teams, and what oh, I can the say CEO about us, is that we are always trying to learn and listen and strive to be better. And so, as you look at the 10 experiences that you're gonna to see today, and as you play games this Please week- Please don't be loud. There's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice, is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. <laughs> that no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. That for every moment that you invest, for we every know, moment so much you invest in into our game, we, make, we want you to realize you that that fucker paid a hundred dollar on the boxes and got the cards to be used. So go suck that investment. Fuck. <laughs> and most importantly, that the games are fun. That we move past <laughs> the grind. Yeah, and we move past the experiences <laughs> that truly so, enhance your this lives. Means nothing. And so, as we think through all the things that we're trying to do, know <laughs> that we want to be better. And that we want yeah, to make great games. Yeah, from the man who scammed me. As much as we love <laughs> making games, and as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program, where we show the world how the power of play you guys can be come a together. force for social You can do impact. anything. Millions you even got to turn off loot boxes. I didn't even think that would happen, but you did it. Games, <laughs> it was only temporary. You won't really stop us. <laughs> and to celebrate that, we contributed a total of $1 million to three charities that share our vision for a more inclusive world. Oh, a word? world where representation By the way, and the quality all these charities. are not something we strive for. Watch it be autistic speaks, though. <laughs> and where bullying and exclusion uh. are not an everyday thread. These three organizations, the United Nations, he for she, PACE's National Bullying Prevention Center, and Ditch the Label, Me. an anti-bullying yes. organization. Okay. All are doing great work, and we're proud to I was legit worried. Oh, he for she. That, uh. And thank you for your support. Thousands of us at EA and millions of you <laughs> together doing immeasurable good because we love games. Thanks for being with us. And thanks for the incredible privilege of making games for all of you. Now, without further ado, let's hey, take a look. Hey, it's the thing we're all basically here for. Oh, it's an Well, that probably, finished. they're going to show a lot of this then, so. All right. We left our world and they need to. Those just look like falling. Creating. Altering. Destroying. So that's where all the fallen were from Destiny. <laughs> is all that remains. Church. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever. Destiny. Uh, boy. Two minutes. It'll probably be this, and then they're gonna show like a expansive amount of gameplay afterwards, like they usually do. It wants to destroy us all. Fucking Alex. Where are we dropping, boys? Okay, I do love the soundtrack using these. It's uprising. Um, did you make sure to cover the copyrighted audio? Yeah, we're kind of... I mean, EA has had so much of it, we're just kind of boned anyways. 
I like that guy, green guy suit. Yeah, oh, I like dude. that enemy design too. Alright, gameplay, let's go. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you all next time. <laughs> I feel like this isn't supposed to be happening because I, I, I know I'm going to get a, someone's going to get a seizure from this. It, was... eh, it looks kind of intentional. It didn't look good, but <laughs> the flashing made no sense as I could speak from How a. Cool was that trailer? Not many people cheered. You guys have seen it? CG. I mean, they all fell asleep so, during the mobile trailer. Like me, have had yeah. tons of questions about that Anthem too. since last year because we're all by questions. Oh, no, we want so gameplay. A little bit different for the rest they of the just show, and we're gonna released the dive uh, released day on. So I'm gonna bring some members of the Bioware team to chat with us, ladies and gentlemen. Please give a what warm What did they do, Stephen? Uh, the release date's been put on Twitter. Oh, what is it? Anthem Triumph is one. Anthem comes out February twenty second, twenty nineteen. Because they're about to like fake it right here. I can't. Are they really doing Q and A instead of gameplay? Thank you for coming. They show the gameplay while doing Q and A. Very exciting. So Casey, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So now we know that you all started, or in case you started your career at Bioware way back in the day, but you yep. took a couple years off. But before you came back, you actually you must pay ten dollars in game to know who they are. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back. It's awesome to be making games for Bioware fans. You know, we have the best. So fans. you guys want a uh, gameplay? So, so we brought the developers to talk about to gameplay. Come back to it, and you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio, and that's kind of where it started with Anthem. Is just thinking about. You know, what is the evolution of a Bioware game? And we wanted to create a brand new world for people to discover, you know, a whole new world of story and character. But we also wanted to do something- Oh no, they're gonna do one of these you know, montages of where they just fucking world. show game that would change bullshit after bullshit. We also I like them just pointing at a circle where, being like, yes, you know, this is indeed a circle. Your friends into it, I mean, it makes sense if well. the game's so coming really out in 2019 the vision of the game, not an MMO, and not this not year. Game with story sort of it's on the early side, next year. But that means we eight months away. Really uh, you know what, you're fans right. fans really Shit. love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're oh, planning Jesus. to make story work in this shared world. So a great story. This, for this is the is type really of stuff we saw like two years with, before Andromeda. Uh, choices you get to make, <laughs> and feeling like the story is about you. In a lot of multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing right, multiplayer go. and storytelling into the same area. Nope, concept now you can art. Build a solution to that, but you have to really build it into the story of the game, and that's what we've tried to do with with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world. The world is really dangerous, and you're focused on your mission. Uh, and this is where other players get to play with you. The thing that's really interesting oh, that's about in game. this, it's unique for uh, for Anthem, is that this is... You see that uh, subwoofer going on so in the background? Weather, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or uh, it's nighttime. What we're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at a, at a moment is seeing the same Okay, thing. it's looping. And this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we Here all we experience go. together. Here we go, kinda. Where's the UI? But then when I finish my mission, I come back to a base like Fort Tarsus. And this is a single player experience. I turn in my, my uh, rewards, I talk to some characters, I experience the choices of my action. And this is where your story really mm -hmm. lives and breathes. That's kind of concerning how vague he's and being about it. And by doing it this it. way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so no, that we can add a story for years to come. For co -op. So oh, one of the first things like that we hear that. when um, from our community is they want to continue to play in our worlds. When they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age, players want more story. And so we've designed Anthem in a way that we, we designed Anthem in a way where we could add more story in the future by giving the game no story at all in the beginning. With a character that you've grown to love or uh, an event in the world that uh, deepens the lore or uh, an entirely new storyline and plot. Well, I'm certainly not going to complain about more story. I don't think anybody out there is going to either. So, Kathleen, I wanted to ask you... Uh, I'll complain about more story, but I'll complain about writer. it not being Can there at launch. Can you speak to what it's like to create a new... Depending on how much is there at launch. 
Well, what's exactly. really exciting it's because for us, you know what I'm already um, getting the inklings right, of like early all access. Of the, the Devs, the designers, the artists. Gee, I'm just getting not a lot of content at launch. New and mysterious for players. I don't think discover. they get it. So, at the heart of the premise of Anthem, well, I just can't the wait to see what the actual the gameplay gods. is outside the of like the whole flying segments. Massive tools, and those tools are in they showed like conflict with supposedly some type of combat last year a little bit of when they ran the into that group, but it was so minimal. Against each other, um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, Just play the near soundtrack monsters. for flying through there. It's a dangerous there. environment that you need to wear a suit of powered armor, a javelin, to, uh, okay, when, you, when you're saying the game is going to constantly change, that doesn't mean have a random storm come in. It's that means actually shape the world differently. It doesn't mean have a quick event a of a storm insane. happening and then now, that storm fucking disappears. Oh yeah, yeah, that's just going to be yeah. like some random events that occur in the open world. Yeah, it's something we've done a few times at Bioware. It looked cool. You know, and really the hardest part is getting started. Star like getting Citizen the EA Edition. Uh, so oh, what no. we try to do is we think about the new experiences. Like the that area looked kind of the same as the last so, time we like, showed stuff. What is the stuff. fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things cool. you actually have Evangelion to Battle Royale. That are different from what you've played uh. before. So that's where we start. And then once we think about those things, um, you know, that's the power of creating new IP, especially for games, is that you actually get to build a whole fictional universe that's meant to bring out a certain experience. And then once we do that, then we kind of, we still need to build all the rest of the stuff. And what unlocks us creatively is to think about like principles around art style, tone, and even the technology and the politics of, of our new world. And then from there, we can actually go and build out every last detail. We're yes. going to see and some flying yeah, footage. We're going to see the Anthem same one minute of looping uh, footage for the next hour. It's meant to feel alive, like it's happening right, uh, right now. And so the world Stop is always saying changing. Game is always uh, changing. Weather, the uh, storms, uh, seasons, and um, yeah, it's a really great concept to write for because. What it means is it gives us the opportunity to drop into the world. And you can tell just by how they're showing the storm right there that it's just going to be these the circular orbs and that just they kind of plop down world. here or there sometimes. I mean, the, and then they disappear. The parts in the dynamic world sound really cool the way that they sound like they're going to come together. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes back to your character. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy beasts. So you are a freelancer, uniquely skilled to pilot these exo, ja, these javelin exo suits, and uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals, the Dominion, the have, Dominion. Uh, they've discovered a way they think to weaponize the anthem the of Empire. creation, and so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. Now, I've heard you call this power armor a couple different things. Is it, a, is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like, what's the, what's the canon term here? We call them javelins, and there are four, and uh, they each have uh, unique abilities. There's the ranger, and then there's the colossus, the interceptor, and finally, can't wait for that to get confusing. Storm. Hey, storm guy. Yeah, so, no, the storm's uh, over there. No, the guy. A way to play the game. Uh, but the thing to remember is, like Kathleen said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer, a pilot, which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your mood, based on the mission you want to engage with, or the, or the javelins that your friends are using. Well, all right, yeah. Um, so really what this allows us to do That's a clever is, way of doing it, I guess. We built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world, uh, so they each have their own unique abilities. So let's take a look at uh, the Ranger now. Oh yeah, the here we go. Is a more generalized suit, uh, able to uh, to do a lot of different things. Uh, use really designed for yeah, uh, here we go. Combat uh, one on one for the most part. The Colossus is heavier, more specialized, but able to really pack in big weapons that let them devastate the battlefield. Oh, gameplay. <laughs> I'm just gonna say this uh, really love ten like seconds. No, 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 no. So the javelins look awesome, but we're going to take a couple questions right now. So Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions. And the first one I may be, be reaching because we only saw so short of footage, rack. but it does uh, remind me of how Mass Effect Andromeda's combat feels, and the combat of Andromeda is the best part of the game. 
Yeah, so we really want p players to express themselves, both through customizing the way their, their uh, javelin plays, oh, through cool. gear okay. and uh, weapons, but also oh, being sweet. able to That the was way Ava, that and that yeah. was uh, Shepard. paint jobs, as well as changing the actual uh, oh, geometry the of the one, suit though. itself. We want teams mm -hmm. to be able to do this as well. And because you're going hey, to be using a javelin those for a long I'm period of time, we really want you Fuck to be you. able to... Fuck you, I'm pre-ordering. chat. I'm glad you brought that up, because actually, Jay Legato has a question connected to customization. Monetization. Here we go. How, when, loot box, cosmetics. Yeah, so we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but mm -hmm. you're always going to know what you're going to buy before you uh, spend any money on it. So no loot boxes. Okay. No, no loot boxes. To pay okay. for power. Interesting. I hate so how it has to be that no they have to, to say it. They have to clap for it. At all within Anthem. They have to. But even more important than that, we want to make sure that Anthem is... That's one worry gone for the moment. Like it's complete from the get-go. So that means a main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service that provides new content for a long period of time. New story, new, new, uh, new experiences tweets. for everyone. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, I'm going to be honest. Watch right, the shepherd colors do a microtransaction. Pre-order bonus. Experience. So can you tell me a little or bit about how bonus. the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about you know the fun of teaming up as, as a team of superheroes and working together. So. Um, you want to get a few people together of different classes. So, you know, I think here we're going to see the, the Colossus, you know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay. If we can have a look at that. So, yeah, even Casey wants artillery, to show gameplay. Really strong, you know, in <laughs> melee combat. And then here you've got the Ranger. Yeah, dude, this looks like a progressive above. step up from com Andromeda. Combos and special abilities and stuff like that. But what I love is you don't just run around. Oh, you go underwater too? So it's yeah. interesting they that last year. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember having the same reaction too. Balance multiplayer <laughs> with single player storytelling. Fuck. So Anthem's really built around trying to combine the uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to They're just really trying to push it that you could play it as a single player experience and I'm just now going out into an open world like this. Uh, well, it is Bioware. A little bit more challenging right. than, uh, than if the team of four people. And we've really tried to balance the co-op experience to be fun, even for people that don't normally engage in this kind of thing. So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. Well, okay, that's good to know. If you want to roll should solo, give you can, a try if there's going to be a, a cosmetic coach. Um, mm. Well, I know you all are on the edges of Everyone has to see my N7 cloud. suit. Yes. Show a little gameplay. Hurry up and show the gameplay. Yeah. Oh, gameplay? You guys want that? <laughs> All right, so um, Kathleen, I think you're going to set this up for us? I will. So, um, the, you're, you and your friends have decided to play a mission called Scars and Villains. Oh, no. Scars have put together an acid based super <laughs> I like this tweet. Take them out. I like how the so state of gaming in 2018 is praising EA like for not, not implementing loot boxes. That's like praising a man not a being abusive or praising crew, someone for not Alan, being Jay racist. And and <laughs> <your> <laughs> <own> <laughs> the right <laughs> thing is praiseworthy. Wow. As we, as we <laughs> experience it here. Um, and yeah, then you just get into one. your That's javelin suit and you head out with your friends. All right. Okay, well, can we see it? Thank you so much, Mark, Casey, Kathleen, for talking to me about Anthem today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the game right. now. Enjoy, everybody. So, here we go. Maybe. Yeah, it's going to be gameplay. Oh my god. I completely missed the rest of the story part, except for the fact that they apparently just they made an acid weapon. Answer. Time to get to work! Faye said these bastards made some kind of acid they're using it as a weapon. So, find where they're making this garbage and shut it off. Put on a shirt. <laughs> well, Ian, what about it? Do you want to up it? Like, it's gameplay. They're not... It's not narrative. I like the music. Nice the sound, though. There it is. Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take oh, it's a story. The area, but, I uh, guess it is. Okay, there careful. you go. That's a tiny bit of story, not much. It's only like a random mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at those. I kind of hope the enemies are more reactive. Right. Nope, Checking just cannon fodder. Look at 
Oh, the weapons! Oh, and the, and the turrets! Better move quickly. I feel like you would have heard those gunshots a bit further away. Yeah, fuck him up. Let's go. The Legend of Korra now. Like, just drive right past him. It's like, I'm gonna start the fight. I aren't leaving. <laughs> Pull aggro so it doesn't hurt your teammates who are lower level. We're so weak. Alright, they've entered the dungeon. Alright, Minesweeper voice. Oh god, yeah, they... Mm -hmm. This There's is like a, a progressive step up from Wait, Andromeda's off. feel, Get a look, would you? which is not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. See those radiant pieces of energy? They're so far, the maybe it's just because they're skipping a bunch, but so far it looks like there's Loads not a lot to do with it. So, yes, careful. yeah. That's my worry. And like what Steven said, the enemies don't really, they don't really pose a threat. It seems. I, like. I have a I have a slight worry that it's going to be a giant open world and I can just fly over most of it. Which I guess you can do in Destiny, basically, with fast travel and sparrows. But, like, it doesn't seem to be very quick, either. Return them to the relic. You've got to silence mm. it fast. There was no Skate 4. Awful conference. It's not too late. Any of these characters could just pull one out right now. Yup. That's right, here. Yeah, was actually Skate 4. Yeah, I love the idea. I love the idea. Of the game, like it's got the science. world's unfinished by the reverses. gods. Do you think we get a bonus? For... The reason you have to have Wait, these giant pair of armors. It just needs the content. Yeah. What the hell was that? I think that was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward hazard pay. <laughs> There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it, and we should find the source. A lot of stuff on the screen. Nothing too crazy to follow, though. No, only showing one like level. It seems. Yeah, yeah. This uh, one mission we'll is all they're showing. We'll see more as it's closer to launch. I'm still like, especially since it's EA, I'm just can't get over skepticism yet. That's cool. It's a pretty game. I, uh, I'll, I, that's probably what I'm gonna be saying all fucking weekend. It's they're a pretty, pretty game. games. <laughs> And, and, well, and with this one, I do like the music. I do surprisingly like the music. Mm -hmm. uh, how cool is that? It's a nice little... I'm so hyped, you guys! Not yep. really, and like, jumpy. Was, uh, I wanted to use jumpy. That was actually just a short version demo of the there. demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. So I'm sure the question on everyone's minds, when it. do we get to play? <laughs> so Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019 on uh, Xbox One. The whole studio already PC. knew. So mark your calendars, everybody. Fire off your tweets. Thank you so much again to Casey and the entire Bioware team. I know you guys have that awesome theater outside, so I will see you guys there. All right. Give it there. up for Casey Hudson, everybody. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today. And I'll definitely keep my eye on it. Studios back still, home like, around the world. Let's give them all a round of applause. Yeah, story-wise, it could be hit or miss. Gameplay today, is probably going to be really to solid. It. Content is the EA big concern. So much available. Right. right, and it is and EA, the, so it's a real concern. And at least one of the bigger worries, which was how they're going to monetize it, is kind of put to rest for the moment. Yeah. So it's like. They're Yarn keeping my interest right now to at least follow it up to launch to see where it goes. Today. Plus, you can take on your friends and right, Yarny 2 is available today. today as well. Yep. Now, that's a lot of, lot of available stuff that's out today. Is anybody ready to go no. and download it? No, you don't want to go home and download anything? Oh, fuck You're yeah. like, I just want to go outside no. into the fan fest. I get it, I get it. You, so, uh, I want to let you guys the know, press, keep your streams half going, of the, because in just a few moments, the FIFA 18 World they, Cup they live tournament for this. They won't they be going home you. until I'm Wednesday. I'm going to outside and check out the games, but I want to thank everybody for coming down to EA Play today and watching the press conference. And have a great All weekend. Right, so now we can just kind of talk over this stuff. Get in the background. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll try to remember 
for the rest of E3 to have a piece of paper here or something to start listing things because I forgot to do that for this conference. And, um, and I did it last year. I could just find a, a Twitter thread. I saw like a few people making threads. Oh, there you go. That works. Here too. we go. Okay. So back all the way up. Uh, Battlefield 5 was the first thing we saw. Uh, confirming the Battle Royale mode. It looks more. like Battlefield. <laughs> yep. It's it's a Battlefield game. I'm going to sneeze. Bless you. His name is Chew Boy. Uh, what was this gif? Yeah, Battlefield 5 is Battlefield 5, the destructible environment. Battle Royale. Mexico, um... I, re I really wasn't thinking when I said a battle royale with destructible environments already exists. But I mean, otherwise, it has potential. Yeah, I, I mean, like people have said, just because of how gameplay functions for Battlefield, they have a huge opportunity to pull a bunch of the PUBG fans, I think. Depending on how they do their battle royale. I'm gonna Only check because the... PUBG is kind of falling apart at the moment. I'm gonna check if Twitch is still showing this. No, Twitch is not, so we gotta cut back. It'll be on in the background though, I'll swap if anything important happens. So, yeah, Battlefield 5. Uh, right, and we will see more Battlefield 5 tomorrow at Xbox. Yes, uh, yeah. single player stuff. Yeah. Uh, FIFA and trophy. Uh, there was a trophy. Uh, yeah. Not our thing. Yeah, sorry you guys. Can, you can play Again. for the UEFA Cup, you can play for the other Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Again, nothing wrong with sports games. They're just kind of they're the same every year, so there's nothing really interesting. There's um Origin Access or yeah Origin Access Premiere, uh, and also Madden on PC. What's the difference between Premiere and normal Origin Access? That's a good question. Because <laughs> I didn't really understand the details of that when they first showed that. It, it, yeah, it felt like they were really moving towards a more. Uh, I don't I don't know what the word for it, but premium subscription service. Because Origin Access isn't like too expensive at all, so I don't know. You get more games with streaming in HD. Oh yeah, the streaming thing. It was uh streaming games was part of it. Oh yeah, they're cloud gaming. That's yeah, what yeah. it was. Yeah, uh, not a fan of cloud gaming. Once, once the fucking infrastructure here in the U.S. is better, maybe it'd be fucking. Mm -hmm. You know, Capcom. It, but we're Capcom's, just so fucking far behind compared to other countries. Capcom's doing it successfully in Japan with Fantasy Star Online and Resident Evil Seven, but they cannot do that here. We just do not have the infrastructure for it, and we yeah. probably never will. So there's that. You can thank your local cable company for that. Yeah, really. Yep. Uh, respawn. With uh, the new Star Wars Just game, the name drop. Jedi Fallen Order, uh, Dark Times between Episode Three and Four, it'd be a canon game. Uh, and there's Clone Wars content coming to Battlefront too. I don't think the damage is gonna be undone to Battlefront two. They're probably gonna have to rely on Battlefront three. Yeah, no. It's... While they're clearly trying to fix it, it's just there's too much bad press around that one. They have to come out of the gate kicking with a third game. In case you guys are curious years about the what they're screaming about, this is all. I'm going. Um. Yeah, the damage is done. I don't want to trust them on it. Maybe when it's and like I, I, I mentioned it when they brought it up, the Ewok hunt, it, supposedly it was an actually really well-made mode, and it was really fun and different, but like, one, I think it was a limited time mode, so it's not even still up, and two, that still doesn't really, uh, what's it called, validate a $60 price tag. Mm -hmm. Uh, but maybe when they introduce the Clone Wars stuff, they said they're also going to do the capital ship stuff, which if you remember from Battlefront 2, you like fly into them, or at least 
Hopefully it's like that. You fly into them and destroy them from the inside as well as from the outside. Uh, but maybe that's only space battle. And that's not what I'm thinking. I'm just uh, not liking this whole push for like cloud gaming and everything because once they get once they decide, hey, we're not going to host this game anymore, it's gone forever. Yeah, that too. Yeah. And yeah. well, that's. I think that's just what's happening as we move more towards digital in general. Ugh, can't speak. Well, sorry. Like even connecting games to the internet once they decide, hey, let's not host it anymore. Like EA's killed so many of their own games just because of this. Yeah. I think for most of their sports games, servers for titles older than like four or five years are shut down now. Yeah, it's a shame. And Which I mean, maybe it doesn't affect as many people as I'm thinking because their audience is far different when it comes to that, but it's still kind of like, Jesus, if they're that willing to do it, how long until they do it with their RPG or action titles? Yeah. Um, next up though was Unravel 2. Uh, it's out today. Yep, it's out. Uh, it's not on Switch, but see what people say I, I, I was going to say, I, I it is an indie, st indie studio still at the end of the day, and we don't know how long it's been in development. So, I mean, there might be a Switch version that comes later. Um, yeah, exactly. So, it, you, you, it's still, in, it, it, they, it's EA there, but it's still indie. So, you know, it'd be how it'd be. I like, I like you can play co-op. You're not limited by being co-op. You can yep. carry the person around. That's super cool. That's always helpful. Uh... Yeah, it just looks good. Apparently the first one was kind of clunky at times, and kind of missed a few marks, but hopefully this one does a lot better. Yeah, if they can improve gameplay, like Anthem improved gameplay from Andromeda, uh, not that that's really comparable, I'm just really impressed with how Anthem's gameplay looked in comparison. And yeah, uh, Sea of Solitude was next, and when we finally got to gameplay, it looked pretty solid. Did, did we get to Madden yet, real quick? Uh, Madden was after Sea of Solitude. Oh, okay. Keep going then. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sea really Solitude looked pretty. Style. I'm, yeah, I'm the... curious about. I'm curious about the gameplay. I'm not sure if it's going to be like. From the gameplay, it looked like it'll be quite linear, which I don't mind too much as long as it's not like completely. It looked like it was going to be a direction. fun puzzle game. Yeah, looks like it should be okay. Uh, uh, that's the vibe I got. Yeah, yeah. Puzzle and slightly platformer. Really cool aesthetic. Yeah. Oh wait. Puzzle platformers are fun. If you like like Limbo or Inside, it looks along the lines of that. Uh, not quite like 2D platformer, but that the same type of idea there. Mm -hmm. Which are they're fun. So. Um, next up was Command and Conquer. Rivals. It's a mobile game. I don't want to talk about it. It's competitive. <laughs> Just don't. You're not gonna be a competitive player. For the Boston Conquerors. <sighs> like, people look at Nintendo and say, man, they can't do esports, but then you'll see Command and Conquer today, and you're like, maybe EA's at the bottom of the barrel, huh? <laughs> it was definitely something. You know, you know what the problem was? No one on stage was smoking a joint while they were playing. Yeah, there you go. That's That was the problem. They didn't have their secret weapon, as Snoop would say. Uh, and then Madden. What did you want to say about Madden? They sent out a tweet that Madden 19 will be on PC. Oh, yeah, yeah, we said that. So, I'm pretty sure that's the first Madden title on PC. Mm-hmm, it is, actually. At least, at least in, like, a decade or so. Maybe they put some in the long time ago past, but... I'm pretty sure it's, uh, first. So, for I those of you who like football, you finally have a football game on PC, so assuming port's good, uh, you know exactly what to expect, and then that could be fun for a change. Uh, and then there was everything with Anthem. Skeptical, but hopeful yeah. now. Yeah, it's Just. EA, we have to remember that. I went from skeptical and distasteful to skeptical and hopeful, so. Just show me more. Yeah. Make make me care about getting the fucking equipment in your game. Yeah. All been... I saw was all I saw was four classes. Oh, this class does this. This class does this. Nice. Neat. Great. What were the powers in the bottom corner? 
I don't fucking know because she didn't tell me. Tell me more about team shotting. I don't know if just two people shooting enemies will die quicker. If it does, wow, enemies could be incredibly weak. Or they'll be fucking dumb if one person has to shoot them. Show me the equipment. Does the equipment have stats? I don't know. Kill me. Yeah, there's still we've, nothing. We've been exactly down the rabbit hole before with other games. We just don't want it to happen again. Specifically because it's a Destiny competitor. Clearly, they're making that very clear. And they, uh, and the way they were speaking in the Q and A, it didn't sound like they got what the point of a game like that is and understand the sense of progression. And because it's Bioware developing it, they were really pushing that you can play this as single player. But mm -hmm. we didn't really see anything to show that. So it's like they're talking about one thing and then showing something completely different. Pop, pop the world and changes. The, thing is, the world the changes. Pop. Like Destiny Ugh, has a single so player. Different. It's got a story too. What's the, what's separating it? It, it? it sounds like you could play the meant to play the whole game solo in in uh, Anthem because you can't really do that in Destiny. I don't even I don't even know if you're supposed to. The way the way they worded it is like you're gonna go down, you're gonna meet random people, and you're gonna pair up with them. Yeah, yeah, and they were talking about the co-op in the end though, which sounded like uh it was optional. It really made it sound like it was optional in the end, so it was kinda of back and forth. They just had like mixed messaging throughout the entire talks of Anthem for me. Yeah, maybe they like, didn't get maybe this, they didn't practice either. You have these developers that are known for single player, so they're gonna be pushing that you could play the single player, yet they showed nothing of what that experience will be like. And right here it was also They should have shown both. Well, maybe they said it and we just didn't hear, but they said there's no romances or anything like that in Anthem. Right, so how limited are the RPG aspects too now? Right. Because that used to go in depth. So it's just it's just really weird and like what you said, Austin, they're being very vague. Mm-hmm. Everything is hush hush at the moment still. Eight yeah. months away from release. Yeah, What's and... hush hush with no reason to be hush hush. I think the most important story just came out. Mm. Anthem will not have romances. I just oh. said this. Damn it. Yeah. Don't worry, I did that earlier too with the Star Wars title. Oh no, that guy was walking around without a shirt. I ended up just zoning out into my own wallow. <laughs> As far as EA romances go, I mean, Bioware romances. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's where we're at. Now then, uh, bingo real quick. I don't know if I want to give it for the off-screen game feed, because the game, the actual game feed was, was right next conference. to it. And also, yeah, it was before the conference. Because they also did it with The Sims. I saw them doing it with The Sims as well, where someone was playing and they were watching someone play it. And I believe that's the only one but... that would be relevant right now. No um... tech difficulties. Not 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 any real tech difficulties. The stream buffered for like a second. Um, yeah, you can't. That could have just been Twitch or internet or anything. There's like no way like to tell. yeah, we're talking like Sony 2017 tech difficulties. Also, just That's confirmed here that uh, EA Access Premiere is $99. Wow. $99 a year? Probably. Yes. Yeah, it's $99 a year. That's like... How reliable of a service will it be in the US? <laughs> Full access to new EA releases on PC before. So this is the complete get every new EA game as it comes out, just paying $99 a year. For how long? I don't fucking know. It says full access, so I guess full access. It's, okay. That I could see being useful then, actually. Yeah, yeah, the the EA uh, origin things are good uh, values. Yeah, it's already a decent value. The biggest thing was that it doesn't have new games normally, but if Premiere is, uh, let's say, let's ignore the cloud gaming part, and you can still just download like you always did with the Origin Access. $99 a year actually doesn't sound bad, because you're paying mm -hmm. for a game plus, say, like an expansion, and now you have access to all EA's games. I can't really argue that. That's a... Oh, actually, does it include expansions? Maybe, maybe that's the catch, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I could see that totally being the catch. I don't know. It depends on what type of games they're going to do. Because, like, with Anthem, they said they're only going to have cosmetic stuff. But does that include... 
expansion packs yearly or something? I don't know. I don't know. But something say, like, you just want to play a bunch of the EA's older titles? I guess it's not a terrible deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, players will matches. have unlimited access to The Sims 4, including content from the Digital Deluxe Update, Dying Out Game Pack, and Kids Room Stuff Pack. That's controlled then, because that doesn't include pets. So that doesn't include a bunch of the expansions for Sims. So now it's like, so how limited is this pack? I don't trust So that. it's selective. Uh, I don't like how selective <laughs> that is. That's uh, weird. Yeah, I don't. And confusing. Yep. From a consumer's perspective. As like, it always obviously is Obviously we'll BioWare know more because we're looking into EA. it. But like, if I don't know beforehand what is going to be available in that, outside of the base game, I don't know if that's a good value for newer titles. Mm -hmm. well, Maybe better off just doing it the traditional way as always. Uh, other than that, I think that wraps up EA. And we uh, can... They were the only conference today. Yep, so that wraps up G2B3 for today. Uh, join us tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific for Xbox, then later that night for Bethesda, and then Devolver. Especially looking forward to Devolver, but uh, all three of them, high expectations, uh, yeah, as we talked about earlier. And How early are we starting tomorrow morning before Xbox? Probably or like 3.30, maybe 3. Okay, okay. Um, We'll want to do predictions for all three, right? Because yeah, it's yeah. going to be one after the other, it looks. Or no, there's a good amount of time between Xbox and Bethesda. Never yeah, mind. yeah. So, yeah, that's what will be going down tomorrow. <laughs> Make sure to follow, tune in for that. Follow Twitter, social media. Bot's working, yep, right? Ah, will... oh, shit. Uh-oh. Uh, we'll be sure to tweet out everything in Discord, like, just as much as we did today. So thank you for a bunch of you guys joining. I'm pretty sure we had a decent amount of consistency here. Yep. Like uh, that was that was good. So don't don't miss the rest of the stuff with us. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. There's plenty more to go over. Uh, real quick though, there wasn't really any surprises here at EA, were there? Outside of what got spoiled. Yeah, what Yarny got leaked. 2 was released today. Yeah, getting re the title released was today, that was a big surprise. Yeah. Oh. And um, the other indie game we didn't know about. Yeah. Other than that, we kind of had an idea of what they were going to show and what to expect. Mm hmm And still coming away, so, less than stellar impressions, but then... Yeah. Uh, we'll be... I, the fact that I came away skeptical but hopeful is better than what I was expecting. Not not by much, but it's it's better. I'm not like disappointed really, or maybe I am. I don't know. It's okay. It wasn't well, like I'm gonna throw up in my mouth like last year. I'm I'm more disappointed because EA's big uh, press play was we're going to be releasing these games without loot boxes. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. That should be a given. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. That'll that will wrap it up for us now uh tomorrow around like 3 3 30 we'll be back with uh xbox predictions and expectations uh then later that night for bethesda and devolver uh tune in then for all that uh and so until then go to bed go to bed go to bed <laughs>